He's sweating. Beads are forming on his forehead. Your confirmation is not required, sir. Now on to the boat. There it is again. To your north, as it has been since you came to the coast. The reeds whisper, stalks rubbing against each other. But then, in the middle of it, something completely different. It sounds like a bow, very slowly being drawn against the strings of a violin. A very small violin, made of reeds and rushes. Maybe there is room for three on the boat. What? What are you talking about? Is this... really us? Your skin crawls. A delicate tangle of arms and legs unfolds from the reeds, limb by limb. To then just stand there, moving its scythe-like arms in ghostly silence. It's still there, an unfolding mechanism of reed-like chitin, hovering in place. What are you talking about? There's nothing there. The stick insect is over three meters tall. It looks straight at you with its tiny pinprick eyes and its grotesquely small head. You feel your legs shaking under you and your gun hand rise instinctively. Tell me what you see, damn it. I can't make out one small thing in the reed. I can see it. Four simple words, thank God. If he can see, then you're not insane. But that means... It's really there, spinning slowly, in absolute silence, its limbs long and slender. Be very, very careful. The creature stands on long stilt-like legs, antennae hanging from its head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. Reed-like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss, like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. The hiss is different from the strings you heard before. It says something else in a lower pitch. It is. You glance over your shoulder. The lieutenant holds a piece of milled aluminium. He begins to pull it open, extremely carefully. It's the camera. We need a photo. No one will believe us. From the corner of your eye, you see a sudden cascade of motion ripple through the phasmid's limbs. A series of ultrasonic clicks fills your ear. With the sound of metal sliding against metal, the lieutenant reveals the lens. The glass glints in his hand as he begins to slide in an ampoule. You see the phasmid turn to him, its mandible antennae reaching out. 
The motions are quick, sudden. Something cracks in the lieutenant. He's letting his pride get in the way. The ampoule will produce a loud hiss. You're right. It could scare it away. I need a better moment when it's not looking. I'll wait. I'm on standby, he thinks. His hands sweaty around the machine. The spindly mechanism turns itself back to you. Its antennae taking their measure of the air. Slowly. The creature tilts its tiny head to the side and appears to look at you. It is incredibly light, like the slightest gust of wind should blow it away. But it doesn't. Slowly, with your breath held, you take two small steps toward the phasmid. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. Sweat drips from your brow, soaking your chest. You reek of it, your chemicals. The tracheal system on the creature's abdomen expands in front of you to take in and expel air. It's smelling you. Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible-like antennae to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds, and its eyes are like small droplets of water. Maybe it is real, the pheromone. About now, he is ready to believe in anything. The insect's head is crowned with reed-like scales, the shape of seed heads. They rustle as the air moves. The ventricles at its abdomen continue expanding like lunglets. Breathing you in, your sour, greasy semiochemicals on the breeze. The insect stops its stridulation, seeming to observe you. Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion. Glittering, the world stands still around you. Suddenly, there is silence. As you do, the invertebrate comes to life, its limbs moving independent of each other, as if each has a mind of its own. They are white, like stalks of porcelain, knitting above you, praying to you. The reed creature does not stop its stridulations. It towers above you, parting the reeds it emerged from. Tuft-like structures still rustle on its joints. No reply. A total ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stridulations of its limbs continue all around you. You were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on its segmented lower lip. The faintest smell like you've never felt before, like burnt roses. Careful, it may be- The foam slowly turns a darker shade, like burnt, letting out that same smell, like summer burning. Okay. There is no change in the insect's motion while it's being aimed by the camera. It remains fixated on you. In three. If it moves, you jump back. I'll shoot. Here we go. Three, two, one. The shrill flash of the camera cuts the air like the blade of a sword. The phasmid freezes in its bright light. Head turned toward the lieutenant. Hypnotized by the flash, it stands frozen before you. I got it. Immortalized. The antennae hang from a great height. With your hand shaking, you barely touch the tip of the left whisker. 
on contact, the kiting. It is surprisingly delicate, the curly end of the whisker, like a young vine. It's even a bit wet. Be careful, detective. It's moving. You were right. It glistens with some kind of moisture. The creature in front of you stays frozen. It tastes like sugar, very faint. The anthropod towers above you, tufts of reeds pointed from limb and head alike. Odorless, mostly comprised of water. The limb before you is incredibly light, like eggshell. It's much lighter than a reed. You feel a soft push could tip the creature over. It's hollow exoskeleton collapsing. Warning. A small shudder passes the creature's arm. High above you, its black pearl eyes still glisten, mesmerized by the light passing its nervous system. There is some kind of countdown happening as it slowly processes the overwhelming brightness of the signal. The invertebrate is regaining control. Another shudder pulses through the creature's limbs. It jolts back to life, like a record continuing where it left off, in a swaying, praying motion. Even the small black pearls of its eyes do not stray from you. I hate it. Tell me what he's like for you. Yes, holy is the Lord of hosts, and all the earth is filled with his glory. Now, I will tell you what he's like for me. For me, it is a series of half-lit images, a kind of darkness being intruded upon. Transient, dim, moist. Shapes of plants and animals, and internal sensations. A swarm of sounds, tiny vibrations on the inside of my forearms. All speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. I am at the end of an air funnel. Weightless. So light, it only feels like something to be me. In truth, perhaps I'm nothing. I certainly do not have a soul. And if I did, it would never ache. Are you sure? Sometimes, when molting, I will grow a lost limb. One time something went wrong, and a small leg replaced a missing antenna. Yes, the leg tried to move around independently, making it hard to walk. Yes, thankfully someone ate it. The next time I mold it, I grew an antenna again. So am I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semiochemicals. What were you born to detect? Yes. No one detected me for such a long, long time. For thousands of years. I dithered. Out of sight. Trapped myself in greenery. No one believed I exist. Almost no one. Until you came, detective. Dripping of blood that smells like strawberries. Across the calm sea. The first in a thousand. No, you are awake. I am real. Light is forming me. This is real. Not even the birds know that. Not even the water lily. You can also eat it. If it's a leaf, you can put it in your mouth. Yum yum. Or read. 
Wait, so... Yes, they don't mind. Yes, I once cloned myself and ate the little ones. It was winter, and I woke up at the wrong time. It was an accident. I am an all-known species of the order Phantasmodia, endemic to the Insulindia Isoma. For the last 350 years, I have hidden in plain sight, masquerading as a reed, molding, cloning myself, unfolding at night to play with trash bins and boys. No, no one believed I exist. Almost no one. Until you came, detective, dripping of blood that smells like strawberries. Across the calm sea, the first in a thousand years. And the four thousand year old Cerezolithic civilization buried so deep in the sediment that you do not even know it is there. They too did not see me. I am state eaten through four forms of government and two scientific revolutions. Three, if you count stone tools, until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the citizen militia in Revershaw, district of Martinez, March 51. Yes, with stone tools and silk, they too missed me. Although I had not developed the mutation needed for partinal genesis yet, and scoured the Neolithic hinterland as distinct individuals, not clones. No, you are. The moral of our encounter is, I am a relatively medium life form, while it is you who are a total extreme madness, a volatile senior nerve system ominously new to the planet. The pale too came with you. No one remembers it before you. The Nidarians do not. The radially symmetrics do not. There is an almost unanimous agreement between the birds and the plants that you are going to destroy us all. It is a nervous shadow cast into the world by you, eating away at reality. A great, unnatural territory. Its advent coincides with the arrival of the human mind. You are a violent and irrepressible miracle. The vacuum of cosmos and the stars burning in it are afraid of you. Give me enough time, you will wipe us all out and replace us with nothing. Just by accident. We suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out anaerobic life 2.6 billion years ago, when organisms first started breathing. Only much worse. Instead of air, you exhale thoughts. There are no trees that eat thoughts. Everything your eyes touch goes back there, behind the nerve mirror. What if you blink? Are we still here? Please don't blink. What if? He misplays us all one day, we'll just forget. Please be. Or oh, one day, one of you will close your eyes and sign, and open them to see that none of this ever existed. It doesn't look like that, no. You're just staring at it. Okay. Is it somehow related to the case? I think you should back away from the unstudied species now. No, there is one more. Thank you. I also have one more thing to say to you. That woman, turn from the ruin. Turn and go forward. Do it for the working class. She was middle class. It doesn't take a three meter stick insect to tell you that. 
As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements, stepping on the water, the long limbs carrying its feather weight without breaking its surface. Just like that, it's gone, skating away across the sea's calm mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water. And something under it, in the place it stood, bobbing there, among the reeds, a collection of items. It's gone. Apparently, yes, like a water strider, only... I've never seen anything like that in my life. Looks like a nest of some sort. We should have a look. What now? Our suspect is not looking so good. We need to check on him. <laughs> 